of the stage is almost two hours late. I do. Well? Well, what? Why is the stage late? I wouldn't rightly know, Mrs. Gable. All I know is the stage left St. Louis on time. Oh. Stupid man, he doesn't know anything. I only hope the stage gets here in time for the concert tomorrow night. I knew it. I just knew it. Now, I'm not one to say I told you so, Sarah, but it was a mistake to count on a singer that nobody's ever heard of, much less seen. You're just offended, Minnie, because you're not singing at the concert. But I think it's high time that we brought real culture to Virginia City. Minnie may be right, Sarah. For all we know, Thomas Bowers may be just a nobody. A nobody? Have you forgotten that letter from the Lyceum Bureau in Chicago? Oh, why, he's compared to Count Mario, the greatest living Italian opera singer. Why, they even call him the American Mario. Do you call that a nobody? Oh, there's Horse Cartwright. I've got to talk to him. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Good morning, Miss Gable. I hope your father hasn't forgotten his promise to make the collection speech at the concert tomorrow night. No, ma'am. He, he sure ain't. He's got that thing memorized backwards and forwards. He's been practicing it for a week. <laughs> ma'am, that's sure a fine thing you ladies are doing to benefit for the pilots here. Certainly gonna need that help after the winter they've just gone through. Oh, yes, those poor, unfortunate people. But I think that's the least we can do for our red brethren, don't you? Yes, ma'am, I do. Stage coming. What happened to you? Plenty. We crossed the river, the ropes broke, and we lost all the luggage. Then later on, we lost a wheel. All the luggage? Yep. Mr. Bowers, I'm Mrs. Gable, president of the Virginia City... Uh, no, ma'am, my name is Simpson, uh, Charlie Simpson, in Ladies' Novelties. Oh, I had some lovely items to show you, fair ladies. But thanks to that fool driver, all my merchandise is now at the bottom of the river. Oh, I thought you were the famous singer, Thomas Bowers. Uh, no, ma'am. I'm Thomas Bowers. Oh! You're Thomas Bowers? I am, madam. Oh, but you, you, you can't be. Uh, I mean, uh, surely there's some mistake. <laughs> Mr. Bowers must be exhausted from his harrowing trip, Sarah. Now, aren't you going to take Mr. Bowers to your house to freshen up? You know I have no guest room in my house. Uh, there's a hotel up the street. I'm sure you'll find accommodations there.
lost luggage well, back man. for you. Well, we'll send some men out first thing in the morning. Well, we'll even drag the river if necessary. Well, how long now, you can't ask for more than that, can you? Yeah, you shouldn't have lost them in the first place. Oh. Right. Excuse me. Forget about it. Can you tell me when the next stage leaves? Well, that would be the one you were on. Uh, take a day to clean it up, put a new wheel on. Let's see, day after tomorrow, that'll be Monday. You mean there's nothing sooner? Sooner? You're not thinking on leaving before the concert, are you? I have a feeling there's not going to be any concert. Thank you. Pardon me? Yes? My name is Thomas Bowers. I'd like a room, please. Beg your pardon? I said I'd like a room, please. I'm sorry, we're all filled up. I see. Thank you very much. Pleasure is all mine. Yes, sir? Yes, I'd like a nice large room, uh, with a bath, if you have one. Yes, indeed, sir. I can give you a room with a bath on the same floor. How will that be? That'll suit me fine. Will you please sign here, sir? But, Mrs. Gable, the next issue of the Enterprise doesn't come out till Monday. That's two days after the concert is scheduled to be held. Oh, my, I forgot about that. But you still haven't told me why you want to cancel the concert. Well, isn't that rather obvious? How am I ever going to explain to the ladies of the Virginia City Culture Society that I hadn't known that Thomas Bowers was a... was a... A Negro? Well, that's not exactly what I meant. Isn't it, Mrs. Gable? What did you mean? Oh, Mr. Walker, it's all so embarrassing. Oh, well, it shouldn't be. But if you cancel the concert, it will be, for all of us. Well, uh, what do you mean? Well, Mrs. Gable, as a self-appointed leader of cultural activities in Virginia City, you should have known all about Thomas Bowers. He's quite famous, you know. He's given concerts all over Europe. Now, it seems to me that if the color of his skin didn't bother Queen Victoria, it shouldn't bother the fair ladies of Virginia City. Queen Victoria? Why, why, Mr. Walker, are you trying to tell me that that Thomas Bowers sang for the Queen? Why not? He's considered to have one of the greatest voices in America. I understand the Queen was very pleased. Thank you, Mr. Walker. You're a most persuasive man. <laughs> and then he gets off of the stage and says, I'm Thomas Bowers. <laughs> you should have seen Mrs. Gable's face. <laughs> Looked like she was going to take a fit right then and there. <laughs> Speak of the devil. May I have some ham and eggs, please? And you've got money. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, of course. Well, that's too bad, because we're all out of food. Then perhaps I might have a glass of water. <laughs> we're all out of water, too. A glass of water, boy? There's a horse trough right out in front. Let him go. Let me have him. Take it easy. I don't think you fellas won't play around anymore. Do you, boys? Come on, let's go outside. You need to cool off. Come on. Thank you uh, very much, 
I guess I wouldn't have stood much of a chance against their odds if you hadn't stepped in. I don't know. You look to me like you can handle yourself pretty good. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have figured a singer could hit like that. Well, I guess I was so infuriated I didn't know what was happening. But thank you very much, Mr... Cartwright. Horse Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright? I wonder if you could tell me whether there's another restaurant in this town. Yeah, there's one over there in the hotel. Pretty good food. No, I'm afraid I wouldn't be welcome there. They've already refused me lodging. Said they were all filled up. Filled up. We'll find out there's Jed. He works over there. Hey, Jed? Jed! You got a minute? Shh. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Howdy, Jed. Is that true the hotel's full? I wouldn't know about that, Mr. Cartwright. I gotta go. Uh, my lunch is waiting. I'm sorry. Well, I guess that answers your question. Don't you worry none, Mr. Bowers. We'll get you something to eat. But please don't go back to the hotel, Mr. Bowers. There'll only be trouble. Now, if you're hungry, you're welcome to come eat at my place. Oh, it's more than enough if that's what you're thinking. And my daughter's a mighty fine cook. Well, thank you very much, but I don't want to intrude. Oh, no, not at all, not at all. Well, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. And I'm certainly glad you were on my side. My pleasure, Mr. Bowers. I'll be looking forward to hearing you sing. next time. I'll fix him. I'll fix him good and proper. Sure you will. You don't think he's gonna get away with that, do you? I'll teach him his place. He ain't nothing but a smart, loud mouth. Well, Sam, simmer down, will you? And give me another steak, will you? That one's cool. Well, that stuff still isn't gonna get started in this town. You wait and see. I'll fix him. I'll fix him, but good. Gary. Pa, what took you so long? Oh. Um, Mr. Bowers, this is my daughter Caroline. How do you do, Miss Caroline? Bowers? Are you Thomas Bowers, the famous singer that everybody's talking about? Well, I don't know about the famous part of it. Oh, but you are. You see, I know all about you. Uh, you can talk later, Carrie. Mr. Bowers is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> How was your trip from St. Louis, Mr. Bowers? Say, you do know a great deal about me. A few weeks back, I served at a party at Mrs. Gable's. She's the president of... Yes, I've met the lady. Oh. Mr. Bowers, can you really sing in Italian? Caroline, if you don't stop talking and give us something to eat, Mr. Bowers, he ain't gonna be able to sing in any language. <laughs> In here? You got eyes. You see him any place? Sign on his door said he was out to lunch. I, I thought he'd be here. I got an important telegram for him. Oh? Well, let's have a look at it, boy. Oh, no, sir. I can't do that. It's official business. Now, if it's official business, the sheriff is duty bound not to keep it private. You know that. Sheriff, Virginia City. Be on alert for runaway slave. Believed headed Nevada Territory. About 35. Tall, powerfully built, well-spoken. Can be dangerous when aroused. Wanted for murder of overseer. Reward, $1,000. G. Williams, Chief of Police, St. Louis, Missouri. Fits your friend pretty close, don't it, Cartwright? Yep. But I reckon it fit a lot of people. Yeah. Can it? How many fancy talking runaway slaves you've seen around here lately? About his age, about the same height as this one. How come this wire was sent right here to Virginia City? More than likely a general notice is sent to all the sheriffs and marshals throughout the whole West. Thomas Nahum, let's go get the black boy. Sam, wait a minute. What? 
Won't you wait for the sheriff? Huh? What for? Let's just go give him a thousand dollars of the help. Come on. Look, buddy, you get that back over to the sheriff's office, you hear? Tell him what happened. Wait there for him. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Excuse me, ma'am. Mr. Bowers. Sam Kiley and a bunch of the boys are looking for you. For me? For what? Well, they got this police bulletin this morning describing a, a runaway slave that is wanted for murder. Well, what's the guy do with Mr. Bowers? Well, ma'am, the way it read, it could have been him, the description and all. The same general size and general build, and it said that he was well spoken. And it, it said that he could be dangerous when he was aroused. They don't know he's here, do they? Not yet, they don't. He's no runaway slave. Ma'am, they sure want to thank you. Besides, we ain't got time to sit around here talking now. I got my rig outside. Come on. Where'd you plan to take me? To the Ponderosa, to my home. It's all right. You can trust the Cartwrights. They're good people. No. Mr. Bowers hasn't done anything. Look, ma'am, they ain't gonna stick around here asking no questions once they find him. They're gonna put together a lynch mob that quick. Especially after what he done this morning. Lynch mob? Now, listen, there's no point in you dear people getting involved in my trouble. Thank you very much for your kindness, and I do hope we meet again soon. Mr. Bauer. You're not a runaway slave, are you? And if I were? Come on. You got a black man named Thomas Bowers here? In this hotel? You can't be serious. He tried to get a room here, but I sent him on his way in a hurry. If it'll be of any help to you, gentlemen, I saw him going down the street just a little while ago uh, with another colored man. That must be Jed. He's the only other one in town. Jed. He works here, don't he? Well, yes, he, uh, he sweeps up around here. Where does he live? Well, I've never actually been to his house. Just tell me where he lives. Well, he, he, he lives on, on the edge, edge of town, just past the blacksmith. The people one has to put up with in this town, I tell you. Now, where is he? Let him alone! Somebody shut her up! <laughs> Do it me anymore, please! Ow! Pa, don't tell Pa! Look, you've got about one second left before I drive this right through your... All right, all right, I'll tell you. Horse cart right, Keeman. Well, come on, spit it out! They went to the Ponderosa. 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 Let's go. Now, you tell anybody where we're going, it'll be the last talking you ever do. Do you understand that, Jed? Nobody. Not a soul. Hear me, Kay? Kay, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you, Pa. I've been listening to you for 18 years. Mind your tongue, Carrie. Pick up after them. Know your place. Try to be like white folks. Want to bring sorrow and hurt to others. You saw that today, girl. What I saw today was a man. Even if he is a runaway, he's still nobody's slave. But you are, Pa. You lose me mind, girl? I don't belong to nobody. I'm free. Stop fooling yourself, Pa. You ain't free. You're just a poor, scared flunky. I'm 
sorry, Pa. Oh, I'm sorry. Shifted on me. Did him pull back over in the line? Didn't spend too much time, though. I'm sure Sam, Kylie, the boys have figured out you're with me by now. Don't worry, I don't carry a gun. I think that since you're risking such a great deal on a total stranger, you'll have a look at this. I don't need no more proof. Read it, please. <clears throat> Mrs. Amos Gable, Virginia City, Nevada. Dear Madam, this will introduce Thomas Bowers, who has graciously consented to fill the guest spot at your benefit concert. Best wishes for a successful concert. Respectfully, Author O'Neill, manager Lyceum Bureau, Chicago, Illinois. Well, does that make you feel a little better? How come you didn't, how come you didn't show that to Miss Gable? She took one look at me and she was in an awful hurry to go in the opposite direction. Yep, you look tired. We'll be at the house soon and you can relax. I'd appreciate that. I haven't had a good night's sleep since we left St. Louis. Yep. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Sheriff. I wonder where Sam and his boys are off in such a hurry. I reckon they're after the runaway slave. The runaway slave? <laughs> what are you talking about, boy? They, they tell you about it in this. Yeah? Well, how'd Sam know about this? Did you show it to him? I, I couldn't help it. I was looking for you, and they, they grabbed it away from me. Well, all right. What's done is done. I sure would like to know where them hotheads are off to. Give me the thing. Sure. Yeah? Jed, what in the world happened? You been in a fight? Yeah. They made me tell him where horses take Mr. Bowers. I didn't want to, so they... Who in the world did that to you? Sam Kiley and the others. I don't care if he hurts me as you said he would. I just ain't going to let him get Mr. Bowers. Now, don't worry about that. I won't let that happen. But where was they heading? The Ponderosa. They're after them, Mr. Coffey. If they catch up with them, they'll hurt him real bad. Thank you. You done the right thing, Jed. Yeah. Maybe it's about time I did. famous singer. Bowers, welcome to the Ponderosa. These are my brothers, little Joe and Adam. How are you? Mr. Bowers had sort of a rough time on the stage, and he needs some rest pretty bad, Paul. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, we'll try to make it comfortable, Joe. Try to show Mr. Bowers uh, to the guest room. Right, Gentlemen, Bob. thank you very much. It couldn't just be that he had uh, trouble getting accommodations in town. Yeah. That figures. But that ain't why I brought him here. Fact is, that Sam Kiley and a bunch of the boys are after him. They're on their way out here right now. What? After him? What for? Oh, they think he's some sort of a dangerous runaway slave or something. But he ain't, and I know he ain't. Oh, well, I wish I had your faith in human nature. 
Ever stop to think what could happen to Pa if Bowers is that runaway slave? Well, we can take care of Kylie. That's not what I mean. You've heard of the Dred Scott decision? No. As it was just handed down by the Supreme Court. A slave, even in free territory, is still the property of his master. Therefore, an escaped slave is a fugitive from justice. And anyone who offers him sanctuary is an accessory to the crime. What kind of dang law is that? I know, but nevertheless, it's the law, the new law of the land. Pa could go to prison if Bowers is the runaway slave. Runaway slave with a man I just brought upstairs? No. There was a warrant for the arrest of a runaway slave in town, and Sam Kiley and a bunch of the town loafers got it in their head that Mr. Bowers was that runaway slave. Hoss thinks that they're on their way out here. What do they think they're going to do, take him by force? Of course not. Bowers will stay right here until there's positive proof of his identity. A man is innocent until he's proven guilty. That's also a law of the land. Do you think you can convince Kylie of that? Here he comes. Ooh. Howdy, Sam. Anything we can do for you? Uh, no, Ben. Uh, something we're gonna do for you. We're gonna take that black off your hands, take him back to the sheriff. Well, if you're referring to Mr. Bowers, I'm afraid you've come out here for nothing. Look, Ben, you're a law-abiding man. You wouldn't be protecting any runaway slave, would you? Or maybe Hoss didn't tell you who it was he brung out here this morning. Well, Sam, whatever Hoss did or did not tell me is none of your business. It is my business, Ben, if he's a runaway slave. No. No, it isn't. And even if he were, you still come out here for nothing. It just so happens that the man inside is Thomas Bowers, the world-famous singer. You can't prove that. Well, I don't have to. Sam, why don't you and your boys just get along? Whatever has to be done, we'll discuss with the sheriff first. I'm warning you, Cartwright. If you don't hand him over... If we don't, what are you going to do about it? Oh, hold on, Sam. You said there wasn't going to be no fighting. Don't you worry, Luke. There ain't going to be no fighting. Sam, just what do you think you're doing out here? Well, I'm only trying to be a good citizen, Sheriff. I'm trying to protect all of us from that runaway murderer they got in there. We tried to kill me this morning with his bare hands. Yeah. I don't reckon he cared too much for all that fine food you served him, Sam. We just came out here to escort your prisoner back to town for you, Sheriff. Sam, you ain't my deputy, you know that. But maybe you forgot when you read that wire addressed to me mentioning about that reward money. Now, you boys better get back to town right now. Come on, fellas. Ben, I got to talk to you about all this. Well, go ahead, Roy. Where's Bowers at? Inside, resting. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to take him into custody. Now, how come, Roy? You ain't got no proof that he's that slave. Not yet, no. But I saw him in town this morning, and from the description in that wire, I can't say for sure that he ain't the slave, and neither can you. Now, what does that mean? A Bowers come here from St. Louis, didn't he? Did he? Yeah. Well, so did the slave. Now, ain't it just possible that he could have bushwhacked, even killed Bowers, and took everything he had on him, including that letter, and posing as Bowers, wearing Bowers' clothes, got on that stagecoach for Virginia City? In that case, Ben, you'd be harboring a murderer and an imposter. Now, hold on a minute, Roy. It's a very easy way to settle it. Let's ask Mr. Bowers to sing something. He's a singer. Well, I don't see what that'd prove. Most of them slaves can sing. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be proof positive. I guess we have no choice, Hoss. Joe would ask Mr. Bowers to come on. Right, I'll go with it. Wait a minute, now, wait a minute. Paul, you said that the law of the land was that a man is innocent until proven guilty, right? Yes, I did. So what's the big hurry in taking him into jail, Roy? Hoss, it'll make no difference whether he's guilty or whether he ain't. At this stage of the game, I've got to take him into custody for the protection of... 
Well, the people in Virginia City, you Cartwrights, and the fellow inside, if he's really Thomas Bowers. Hey, Pa! Bowers is nowhere in the house. He's gone. Can't be. Hold it, mister. You ain't going nowhere. I'm taking you into custody. He's in it for your good, Mr. Bowers. Oh, is he? Now, look, I've been trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. But if you ain't that slave, what are you trying to run off for? Because I've had enough of Virginia City fair play, and because I think I'm the best judge of what's good for me. I can't go along with that. Now, I can stop a man like Sam Kiley from doing something out in the open, but I can't stop him from sneaking around in private, getting people all stirred up, you understand? He's right. He's absolutely right. There's no telling how far a man like Sam Kiley will try to go. Yes, yes, I know. Well, I suppose I don't really have any choice in this matter, do I? Not till I get positive identification. Now, as soon as I get back to town, I'll wire St. Louis for pictures and further information. But that's going to take a few days. Meanwhile, you better come along with me. <laughs> It's your move, Hoss. Uh, you moved there, right? You don't seem to have your mind on the game. You got another visitor. From what I hear about her cooking, she's going to be more than welcome. You'd be more than welcome with or without cooking. How do you do, Miss Caroline? There's enough here for you, too, Mr. Cartwright. Have some. Well, thank you, ma'am. I might just do that. Oh, this is wonderful, wonderful. You will stay and have some with us, won't you? No, I have to get home to Pa. He's waiting for his lunch, too. Oh, yes, I heard what happened to your father. I'm very sorry. Oh, Pa's fine. Better than ever. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Still, I can't help but feel that if I hadn't come here, all of this wouldn't have happened. If you hadn't come here, Mr. Bowers, Pa may never have faced something very important. I hope you enjoy your lunch. Oh, we, we will. Thank you very much. Bye, Miss Mill. I'll be back later to pick up the dishes, Sheriff. An ill time, Miss Caroline. Oh, Miss Gable. Oh, this is just too much, Sheriff. It's too dreadful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've just heard the news about Mr. Bowers or whoever the man is. With all those tickets sold and people coming from miles around to hear the great opera singer. Oh, what shall I do? Well, you can always get a substitute. Now, Minnie Watkins has just been chomping at the bit to sing. No, that's impossible. I've already turned her down once, and I won't humiliate myself by asking her now. Well, that's up to you. All I know is that Bowers won't be able to make it. Bowers? From the very first, I was against having that man sing. You were? Of course. Only I let Mr. Walker talk me out of canceling the, uh, the concert. How will I ever explain to the audience that the great opera singer that I've been advertising all over town is nothing but a runaway slave wanted by the police? Now, Mrs. Gable, I'm afraid you got your facts confused. Now, Mr. Bowers and the runaway slave are two distinct personages. It's just that we ain't sure which one we got in the jail cell there. Well, what's the difference? You and I both know they're all alike. <laughs> Never mind, horse. I've heard that kind of talk before, many, many times. Yeah. I reckon if one heard it enough, that he'd finally get used to it. No, you never get used to it. Oh, I do.
do hope there won't be a hitch. Oh, I wonder how they'll take my announcement that you're going to sing. Well, look who's here. Well, look at that. Walking right in here as though they're as good as other folks. Got a lot of gall coming in here. Jed, you got a short memory. You don't frighten me anymore, Mr. Kiley. Maybe you can still hurt me. You don't frighten me anymore. Maybe we'll see about that some other time, Jed. I am a man of peace. But I ain't running away anymore. Excuse me. Carolyn, Jen, I have a couple of seats for you. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. It's a free country, ain't it? Those Cartwrights think they own the whole town. Did you see that? Hey, pipe down, Sam. The fun's beginning. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, regret to tell you that uh, due to unavoidable circumstances, our famous guest star, Thomas Bowers, will not appear tonight. Uh, Mrs. Gable, why don't you tell him why he's not going to be here? Because we're being cheated. There ain't no Thomas Bowers. There's just that runaway slave over there in the jail. And you can thank me that he's over there, not free to run around and kill somebody. Yeah, we want our money yeah, back. We want our money back. Oh. Oh. Quiet, please, ladies and gentlemen. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please be quiet? Please. And let's not forget why we're holding this concert. It's for a worthy cause, so that we can buy food and medicine and supplies for a, an Indian tribe that needs your help, and they need your help this year very badly. You know that. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. <clears throat> As I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted, uh, Miss Minnie Watkins has graciously consented uh, to stand in for Mr. Bowers and furnish us with several of her delightful selections. Uh, but, uh, but first, our esteemed pianist, Simon Reed, will open our concert with uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, Turkish Rondo by Wolfgang Mozart. <laughs> I didn't look there. I thought everybody was going to be here. I got this message here for him about that runaway slave. Come on, let's go. Sheriff Roy Coffey, Virginia City, Nevada. In re your inquiry, Runaway slave Hezekiah Randolph. Latest report confirms he is not in your territory. Last seen heading for Canadian border. G. Williams, Chief of Police, St. Louis, Missouri. What'd I tell you? Well, don't just stand there gaping, boy. Get over to Mrs. Gable at the concert hall and tell her Mr. Bowers will sing. Yes, sir. <laughs> right away. Bowers, we got some good news for you. You're free. I heard. Yes, sir, just in time for you to get over to the concert for your first song. I don't intend to do any singing here. What? Try and put yourself in my place, Mr. Cartwright. Try and imagine yourself being hated, despised for no reason whatever. From the moment I stepped off the stage into this town, I've been treated like something subhuman, an animal. 
How could you ask me to sing for people like this? Mr. Bowers. A man, a, a sensitive man like yourself, surely realizes that the Sam Kileys of this world must find someone they can belittle, someone they can make feel subhuman, in order to somehow make themselves feel more important, superior. I'm not worried about the Sam Kileys and that kind. I made up my mind a long time ago not to have anything to do with them. But, Tom, what, what about all the other folks? I mean, that, that hall over there is packed plumb full of folks that came just to hear you sing. Don't fool yourself. They came to see a freak, a black man that sings Italian opera. That's better than a dancing bear. I, uh, I guess I'd better get over to the concert hall and tell them you won't be singing. I'd appreciate that. Well, I'm sorry to let you down, horse. Don't worry about that, Tom. You know, it's sort of funny. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's it's like, well, it's it's sort of like you ain't acting no different from that Miss Gable. Oh, I know you're angry. I can understand that. Good Lord only knows you got plenty of reason to be. But, Tom, supposing the whole town was against you. Now, are you going to change anything or make anything better by by running out? You know, I sort of had you figured for a braver man than that, Tom. Look here. There's some folks that's gonna always be on your side. And of course, there's always gonna be a few that ain't never gonna be. And we both know that, don't we? But what about all them other folks that ain't made up their minds yet? And that hall over there is packed plumb full of folks just waiting to make up their minds. Are you going to pass up this opportunity by running out on them, too?
You never thought you'd get knocked flat by one of them Opry singers, huh? You got a big mouth. You know that? Thank you very much, Four. ladies and gentlemen. Four. You've been very kind. Sing us another one, Mr. Bowers. I'd be very happy to. From the works of the distinguished composer of Italian opera, Rossini, I'd like to sing the La Colonia aria from the Barber of Seville. Lo schiumazzo va crescendo Prende forza da poco a poco Vola già di loco in loco Sembra il tuono la tempesta Che nel senso del lavoro resta Va fischiando, prantullando E ti fa raggiallare Alla pintura bocca in scopio Si propaga, si raddoppia E produce un'esplosione Colmi un colpo di canna Colmi un colpo di canone, un tremoto un temporale, un tremoto un temporale, un tremoto un temporale che fa dare a rimbombar, un tremoto un temporale, un tremoto un temporale, un tremoto un temporale che fa dare a rimbombar. El meschino calunniato ha finito cal. Stato. Sotto il pubblico flagello per danzarte va che porre il meschino allunato ha finito calpestato sotto il pubblico flagello. Cielo per gran sorte fa crepar Sotto il pubblico flagello per gran sorte fa crepar Sotto il pubblico flagello per gran sorte fa crepar Si fa crepar, si fa crepar, si fa crepar 